What kind of small business could you start, acquire for as little as $20,000? Folks, a lot of you are disappointed in your careers and you see the vision painted by Alex Armozzi, Cody Sanchez, and so many other excellent content creators. But before we get into that, let's welcome Bo Eckstein to the show. Bo, how you doing? I am doing fantastic. Can't complain. <laughs> yeah, you can. But you won't complain on this show because that's not what we do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, before we get into this uh, idea of buying a business, starting a business uh, for 20 grand, I want to share with you a stat that I heard Andy Forsella and Ed Milet share. I was It was a YouTube video, but I was running, so I was listening to it. And I want to see if this feels right to you. I believe Ed Milet said this to Andy. 8% of folks are destined to be entrepreneurs. And only 1% of those 8% will ever be millionaires. That to me just hit home. Because I think there's a lot of sexiness, a lot of sizzle, a lot of everybody's got to be an entrepreneur. But I don't like those odds. That's that's less than one person in a thousand. What do you think of that to start the episode? You know, I think social media has jaded me, has jaded many of us, because we go out there and everybody's telling us what to do. And I mean, I have a podcast, you have a podcast, we have shows, we, we talk about things to do. But at the end of the day, I would agree that that's probably true numbers. Now, doesn't mean that an entrepreneur to me is somebody that goes out and, and owns and operates a business, maybe a franchise, might be a vending route. So I, I do believe that there's a difference in kind of entrepreneurship. Like if you're going out and starting a business from scratch, you're going to have the highest failure rate versus if you buy a business model that's proven, you're going to be, you're less likely to, to fail. Like, you know, a, a business acquisition, there might be only a three or 4% failure rate because you're really buying an established business versus like you starting something from scratch. So um, a true entrepreneur, probably if you really look at it, start something from scratch and isn't using somebody else's recipe or formula or, or franchise or license model. I still consider being an entrepreneur owning a business or a franchise, but there's a difference there. So I think somebody who starts yeah. a business is going to have, there's, there's definitely a higher failure rate. And people, the number, yeah. one of the number one causes is they run out of money. Exactly. Exactly. Well, the other thing I want to make very clear is in this conversation, my takeaway from it was somebody that's going to, it's going to go on and they're going to create a brand. It's going to become a billion dollar brand. And Really, in their conversation, they're like, people think it's easy, right? Uh, I think Andy talked about he rented his first store and he had to sleep in the back of the store for like three years. He also shared, get this, Andy Frazella, creator of 75 Hard, made, I think it was, 50, let's call it 60 grand over a decade. That's not 60 grand a year. That is 60 grand for the first decade. Lots of people are jaded on social media. They think it's done tomorrow. They're, they have unrealistic expectations. They hit a wall. They fall down. Folks, it takes work. I do believe you can be a solopreneur, solopreneur and make a good living. You're not going to build a billion dollar business. You're not going to be the next Kylie Jenner. I'm sorry. But you know what? You can do great things. Just get in, do the work, Make sure you don't run out of cash. Follow recipes. It, it, it's, it takes work, man. Choose your heart. So let's get into the topic at hand. You got 20 bucks. You hate your freaking job. What are some things that uh, we might be able to look at? Say, you know what? Let's go do that instead. <laughs> let's start with uh, 20,000, not 20 dollars <laughs> I said 20 grand, didn't I? I'm sorry. Right. I said 20 I... bucks. I heard <laughs> 20 grand, 20, two, two, zero, 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 zero. There you go. Um, Okay, so this is kind of my blueprint that I'm telling, you know, trying to help people with. Because there's a lot of people that are frustrated mm -hmm. and they're like not making any career uh, advancements in their life and they feel like they're stuck. So what advice would I have? And now we're talking based on what Andy and Ed were talking about, that there's such high failure rate. I would, I would invest in some sort of franchise model. This is assuming that you have relatively decent credit, uh, mm -hmm. credit worthiness but you can leverage the SBA program and you can you know, essentially buy something that has a total startup cost of 120,000. 
You're building and working capital. So that's going to float you as you get the business developed. So that's what I would do. There's a ton of options by utilizing SBA financing. So even if you're like, hey, I've got 20, 30, 40, 50 grand and I'm completely stuck, maybe you can't go buy that house in California. Maybe you can. But what is, is you know, if you're really looking to supercharge and you believe in the one run all at a time, I think you need a little bit higher paying job to kind of increase your savings capacity to buy that one run at a time. And in order to do that, you got to get out of that 80, 80,000 a year job and you have to start a business where you can do two, three, $400,000 in revenue and bring 200,000 back home, have better tax incentives. So right now there's never been a better time to look into business ownership. I mean, we are truly blessed in this country to have a program like SBA. They're going to lend like most 90% of all this. This is FHA for first time home buyer. I mean, this is FHA for business owners. Like even experienced business owners are using SBA financing. So why wouldn't you? It's like amazing. I just helped a gentleman, one of your listeners. Uh, he, he bought a, into a, it's a, it's not a franchise, but it's a business opportunity. And they coach you and teach you and provide machines and place your vending machines for you. So it could be, look, you could still have a job and you could buy a vending business. Okay. And then you can supplement, right. And you could scale that vending business. There's, there's people that operate vending businesses that are making millions of dollars of a year, a year wow. running large scale vending businesses. Plus not to mention the equipment you're getting these section seven, 179 and bonus depreciation. So you should definitely turbocharge, even, even if you're a high paid W2 and you're not, and you, you don't have any tax write-offs, you should look in this as a supplement because it takes about one hour per week per machine in vending. And if you get really good at it and you learn how to place the vending machines at school in schools and so forth, I've talked to people that are doing two or three thousand dollars per machine per month. So not all of them do. The average vending machine probably does about a thousand, seven hundred to a thousand in sales per 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 month. But if you know what you're doing and place them in the right location, just like buying the right rental in the lo right location, you can do this. So if you have twenty or fifty thousand dollars, there's opportunities out there. What I love about the SBA loan too is that we're building in thirty to sixty thousand dollars of working capital in that loan. So you're not stuck with just like 10 or 15 grand left. You have that working capital. Now, at the end of the day, you still need to be able to operate that business and do things. I was talking to a lady yesterday because I'm in a, in a YouTube kind of mastermind now because um, YouTube is a great way to, to share your message. And the lady, the, 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 uh, the kind of people that enrolled into these masterminds groups, they, you know, they have a sales process. And so the, they wanted the lady to talk to me cause she was in real estate. Mm -hmm. And then my big takeaway was like, she was like, well, what's the ROI? And I, and I, and I actually brought up you in that story. And I said, look, like it might take you two or 3000 videos to really get traction. Are you willing to freaking do that? And that's yeah. what I was like. And so whatever this conversation can do for somebody, I think is are you ready to do the work because all this stuff all the stuff we see on social media all these people that have huge success what you're not seeing is all the underlying things they did like andy forsella for example okay like that guy slept in his slept in his store for 10 years dude for a, for a decade he made i can't even i i gotta tell you i can't even fathom making 60 grand over a decade i think i made more than that as a teenager Right. I mean, and that, it, I, that's what it takes. And oh, by the way, let's be clear. The other thing he said that I thought was awesome is his business. When he was that 10 years, it really was his side hustle because he had to get a day job to pay for his lifestyle. And I'm like, this is the stuff that we need to tell entrepreneurs because it's not all sexy. It's not all 30, 30. Cause again, they were sitting in a room with $40 million in cars. I can't even imagine what that looks like, but we're only seeing the after we're not seeing the before. And more importantly, but we're not seeing all the failures for every one Andy, there's probably a million failures folks. It takes work. It takes effort. You're going to make mistakes, but you know, you got to believe in yourself. Just, I, it drives me crazy that people think they can be there in six months. That's not how this system works. I know you, Instagram is a joke. Now, if you go on Instagram and you see these people scrolling, like how I made, you know, $650,000 last month. Like, first of all, I don't believe like 90% of anything on, on Instagram. 
And no. it's sending the wrong message to people because even if they were extremely lucky, because there are those those one yeah, ones this, onesies yeah, yeah. that that that, that yeah. do it. Unicorns but, happen. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, what I can tell you from a personal experience is I've been stacking bricks, stacking my foundations for 26 years now, and I continue to stack. And I, you know, and it's not been easy for me. And I am super disciplined. I keep on learning. And what I could say is that, like. I might not have done things the, the smartest my whole life. Like I look at people that have gotten better surges of growth. But if you're willing to just keep on stacking those foundational bricks, you will get to the promised land eventually. And, and you know, you might, be, you might be Colonel Sanders, KFC, like he didn't hit it till he's like in his 60s or something, right? And yeah. or like an Andy Frisella where... Like he could have given up, but now his businesses do like over a hundred million a year in revenue, right? His nutrition company and his coaching businesses. Mm -hmm. And so there, there's a story for you. And, and what I like about Andy, he's just like, you kind of like when you, when you listen to him, he's kind of a jerk, you know, you get like, but he just tells you how it is in a good way. Oh, it's yeah. He is, he is in your face. No filter. He'll just give it to you. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, the other thing we should talk about, again, you're the concierge to small business lending. You get lots of questions. SBA has something called 7A, SBA 7A. Why don't you give us a couple of FAQs? Because I think a lot of people are excited to get you know, FHA of business lending, but they don't realize you got to get some you got to get some raw material to, to even start the process. Yes, I get the this call or this so many books that call on my calendar every day. And it's the same conversation I was telling you before mm -hmm. we went on. And so the first thing to do, the first thing to do is once you find a business and you, you know, you go through and you understand what that business does, who their contracts, whether it's a cleaning company. So I've, you know, I, I was talking to a lady the other day and she's super young. I don't know her age, but I could tell she's very young, but very astute. And she's going to do something big with herself. And she's like, I'm evaluating these two businesses. What are the next steps? I said, well, okay, like figure out which business makes the most sense for you. Like I would dive into that. I would let them know you're getting SBA financing that you need three years of their, the seller's tax business tax returns, yeah. interim statement, get that first. Let's see if the cash flow will support the, the new loan debt payment. The, if it will debt service coverage, that's like the number one thing. Then she's like, okay, well, I, um, you know, she has an interesting background and she was asking me about, so I'll need 10%. And I said, yes, you'll need 10% of the total cost, assuming the business, the cash flows. She's a little bit weak financially, so she was talking about bringing her dad in for some of the equity. But really, people, I think if you can go out and you can find a business, understand how it operates, start doing the due diligence, get the financials, see if it's feasible from, a, from an SBA standpoint up front, and then it's going to save you a lot of frustrations because all I need from you to, to, to really look at this deal and see if it's going to be financially uh, accessible to the SBA program is getting those tax returns. And then you do a, a personal financial statement, a resume in three years of your tax return. That's all we need up front. We can then put together the summary. I can talk to the bankers. I have great relationships with banks. I work with all the PLP len lenders, which are the preferred lenders for the SBA. They underwrite these deals in-house. And, and it's just like, here's the deal. Do you have an appetite for this deal? It's, it's got, it's got a huge collateral shortfall. She doesn't have any additional collateral because they look like, okay, does a deal have any real estate or any collateral? No, it doesn't. That's okay. But okay. Now the, the borrower, does the borrower have a home? No, they don't. It's still okay. But some banks, if there's a huge collateral shortfall, they won't do it. Other banks will. So that's where the concierge small businesses, that's what I do. I navigate this. That's you. It's concierge, not, baby. Yeah. Yeah. That's the process. It really is available. And I do think like for the right person with the right mindset, you can go out today and it's all about finding the deal. If you find the deal that makes sense, you can structure a very low out of pocket type of deal using seller financing and using SBA or using an investor. And you can, you can easily go out and find a business that will, you know, get you away from your W2 job because you're buying an in income stream. Now, you have to be able to run the business. You have to, there's going to be problems when you take over a business, any business you take over as rosy as you, the seller's presenting it to you, you know, it's not rosy. Just like when you're buying a house that was newly remodeled by some half, half, half ass, if I can say ass flipper, right? Like you go to these houses with these flippers that don't do a very good job. You go in and like you, you, 
you start uncovering things once you move in that, hey, I should have bought this house flip. It looked beautiful, but there was a lot of things wrong with it. You have to go in and these businesses will have problems that you have mm -hmm. to fix. And, and it's not like you're going to magically, oh, well, the business has a manager already. Well, you know what? Like, I can tell you nine out of 10 times, you're going to walk into problems that you're going to have to put the fires out on. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, what I want folks on this channel to know is, is you can get to a better financial future in lots of different ways. It takes sacrifice. It takes hard work. Um, if you are truly unhappy at your job and you've been able to squirrel away $20,000, you do have options. And maybe buying an existing business, maybe buying a franchise is the right answer. But realize we're not chasing feelings. This is not a feeling thing. You're going to have to go get the financial tax returns, three years. You're going to have to really understand uh, what's going on. Uh, you can use Bo. He is the concierge to small business lending, but you've got to you've got to take some ownership and you've got to get some of that raw material so you, Bo, can help them. So if they wanted to reach out to you or get some help, how would they do that? Go to onerentalmeeting.com. It's as simple as that. And then schedule a call. But be prepared. Listen to this. Watch this ch YouTube channel. Know what you need. You, you're going to need to find a business and get the, the, the financials. And, um, and then know what you're working with so you can be realistic with yourself. And if, if you're buying a $2 million business and you, have, you, know, you don't have any assets or anything, well, maybe you need to find a partner or maybe you need to buy a smaller business to start with. But it's all, it's all achievable. There are people that go out. Um, there was a lady and she was researching and she was doing a search fund and she ended up finding like an, a, a, this was an amazing podcast. I need to send it to you because you'll enjoy it. She went out and found a business that they, um, they sold egg cartons and packaging stuff. And it was like the, the biggest boring business ever. And she, it's like, a, and it does multi millions of dollars in revenue every year. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's just a million businesses out there, millions of businesses. And it's just, yeah. what is it? You don't need to be the yeah. smartest, you know, you don't need no. to be the smartest guy in town to, to, to do it. It's just that it's going to take work. And I think that's the whole point of this that's show is, yeah. yeah, do the work. Yeah. Do, the, do work. the work. Well, you have an event coming up on March 2nd. It is virtual and free. I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about that. Yeah. So yeah, just uh, when you go to one rental meeting.com, I put a link up there, just go to that link in RSVP. It's a, it's a free virtual event. I am lining up all the speakers right now. Um, I have a CPA who specializes with small business owners. I have Michael Zuber going to do an economics update. Um, Cause I'd like to fuse business ownership and real estate too. I think like everybody's like, oh, I'm a business owner. Uh, well, you know, business owners own real estate. Who are the wealthiest people out there? People that own businesses and own real estate. So I would, I would yeah. consider, the, you know, owning, owning both. Uh, we're going to have um, presentations from HVAC companies, uh, presentations from niche, niche emerging um, business models in the franchise world, things that we, you would never think about. Um, we have people that come to us that are, they work for like tech companies and they're like, Hey, I want to find a better way. And now they're, they're looking at, HVAC companies, they're looking at all these models. It's very fascinating to figure out like when we take people through our assessment process of like what they end up looking at and, and end up like, Hey, I love this franchise business. It, it makes sense uh, that, you know, there's, there's companies that do, do um, cabinets, right? They do the kitchen cabinets. There's companies that do like miracle method. They resurface, um, you know, uh, bathrooms and kitchens and flooring. So, that's what business ownership summit is all about is, is getting all these kind of ideas in front of people. Um, I'm also going to bring on, um, Jordan, who's a laundromat guy and he's going to do a panel. So a lot of people are interested in laundromats. Um, nice. and yeah, and it, it's just really, it's like a great time. And so I'm like on my podcast, what I do is start interviewing these businesses too, because I learn about how they run, how they operate and things I would have never known about and just, the riches can be in the niches is one thing I've realized, like the people that really niche down in, in real estate investing and they really have like a niche that they do like, hey, I'm doing three bedroom, two bath and this zip code. Right. And that's all they do. And they buy rental properties or the people that do who are really good at short term rentals. Right. There's there's a lot that aren't really good, but the ones that actually treat it like a business and really dive into it. A lot of people dove into short term rental 
industry during COVID and now they're paying the price, but there's still a lot of people crushing it, really crushing it. But then you go to that small margin of, or percentage of people that actually are running efficiently. It's the same thing with YouTube, right? Some people get no views, some people get no engagement, some people get a lot of engagement on their YouTube channel. And so it just it's really how, how you focus, your discipline in, in the art and craft that you're doing and just you know doing that over and over again. Like when I started teaching myself SBA financing, there's no real program for commercial mm -hmm. mortgage brokers to learn how to do this. And how do you, so I started, I joined National Association of Government Guaranteed Lenders. That's the association of all the SBA lenders. I call SBA banks. I have conversations. What will you do? What won't you do? Like how do, how do you look at deals? Because every bank will look at something differently. And so that's how I became, I started getting more and more expertise. And, but like, you have to take the initiative to do that. And that's what I've yeah. done. It's like initiate. Like if you want to do better YouTube videos, thumbnail, title, right? Like, you know, I could look at your YouTube channel and you, you don't even do tags on your YouTube channel or anything. You should do that. Like get 1% better every day. But you don't right. have to because you're right. But there's just little yeah, things. There's things we... Well, there's things we learn. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, folks, Bo is the concierge to small business lending. You want to go buy a business, start a business. It might be an option for you. Book a call, onerentalmeeting.com. I can't believe he bought that URL. He bought that just for you. So go to it, onerentalmeeting.com. And of course, register for the free event, March 2nd. Lots of stuff coming. Bo, you're amazing, man. Take care. Thank you. See you guys soon. Mm -hmm.